Hi, my name is Marcella, and I'm glad that you were able to join me today, that you are taking the time out to hear what God is saying to you today through me. So I really appreciate that. I really appreciate God using me because he could have used anybody that he desires, but he chose me. And it is just wonderful. I really appreciate it. You know, I never know what I'm going to say when I get on this camera because it's always different. God always give me something different to say. You know, God's word, it's like you can read something one time and then the next day read it again and it speaks something different to you. Or it even adds to um, what was said the day before. God's word is it's never ending. It's never ending. He has so many wonderful things in store for us. You know it's coming up on the Christmas season. And I get so excited about Christmas. And it's not even about the presents. It's just that it's because it's Jesus' birth. This is time that we know that he wasn't really born at this time. But it's the time that we all choose to celebrate it around the world. And I think that's something very special. Very special. That we can come on one accord at this time. Because, I mean, even the ones who don't celebrate it know that we celebrate it at this time. So regardless if they celebrate it or not, it's like it is known throughout the world. It's known throughout the world. This is Christ. Christ's birthday. Wow. You know, I always try to make sure I give God the honor on everything. Just honoring him on everything. And I always want to be led by the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus left him here with us. So that we wouldn't be comforted. So that we wouldn't be by ourselves. But that the Holy Spirit is right here with us. He's given us everything. Everything. We have his word. We can look at his word. We have the Holy Spirit. Jesus lives in our heart. We have a heavenly father. And our words. Our words can produce life. Our words produce life. God has given us so much. So very much. You know, he told us to choose life. So we have to be so careful in the things that we say. The things that we do. We have to be so careful. Because we want to produce life and not death. When we speak in someone's life. We want it to be something that will help them, not make them worse. And I know that we make mistakes sometimes. Sometimes we get angry. We let anger control our words. But we need to be careful as Christians. We need to be very careful. Because our words can kill. And we don't want to do that. We want our words to produce life. You know, there are so many things that we don't understand that's taking place in the spirit realm. So many things that we don't understand. Because God's thoughts are far beyond our thoughts. This morning, when I woke up, and I was just... And I have the music playing, instrumental worship, and I got up and I just started dancing. This has been time with the Lord. 
it's just a wonderful feeling. I cannot express to you how how great I feel to be just me and the Lord, and I'm just worshiping Him. I I can't express to you how that makes me feel, and I'm sure that the Lord enjoys it. He loves us so much. He loves us so very much. If he didn't, he wouldn't have came here. He came here to dwell among the people so he could give his life up so that we can have we can have the abundant life. He gave up his life so we can have the abundant life. What a mighty God we serve. And that's worth repeating. What a mighty God we serve. Gave up everything so we can have everything. The things that he did, we can do them. He spoke and caused things to happen. We speak. And we cause things to happen. He cursed that fig tree. That thing had no. <laughs> it had no choice. It had to die. Because that's what he spoke to it. He cursed it. He cursed it. When he spoke to that storm, told that storm to stop, to cease, it had to. <laughs> it had to. As soon as he said it, it had to stop. It had no other choice. The things that we say, it has to take place. It has no other choice. It has no other choice. The greater one dwells on the inside of us. So what we say has no choice but to happen. You know, I go through my house at nighttime, anointing my house, speaking peace. It's peace, commanding peace. I command peace all through my house. Whatever comes to me, that I need to do. That's what I do. Because I don't know why God is telling me to do that. I don't know why. I don't know why he's saying do that. But when God says it, I do it. I do it. I went to, uh, well, I had a lot of coins. I looked at those coins. I said, you know what? We having a coin shortage. Why am I holding these coins? And I had, I don't know how much because God didn't, God didn't allow me to count them. But I was saying, you know what? I'm going to go to um, Goodwill. I want to learn how to um, to fade and color my jeans. I'm going to go there and look around. and I just use these coins if I find anything. And the Holy Spirit said, give them the coins. So I said, okay. I was going to use them, Lord. <laughs> but I will give, the, give it to them. So I had this little bank. And um, I put the coins in there. And um, I took them. Now, I really didn't know what to do with the coins. I didn't know whether to ask for the manager, but I didn't see me doing that. I saw me giving it to the person at the door. So that's what I did. When I went in, the lady that was doing the temperature, I I said, God told me to give this to the store. And um, I, I opened it up because it wasn't a Tootsie Roll um, bank. And I opened it. And I showed her what it was twice. And I was telling her, he said, God told me to, 
to give this to the store. I say, I say when God says something, says to do something, and then she it was like she was finishing my sentence. You know, it's like do it, and I gave it to her, and um, so we had we had a few few little words, and um, and I went on, and you know, and I'm thinking. <laughs> You know, I was thinking, I was like, God, is she going to give it to the, the store? Is she going to give it to the store? You know, sometimes God presents us with things. And it's like, are you going to do what he asked you to do? Now, whether or not she gave it to the store was not my business. My business was to give it, to take it there. And then... Um, next thing I know, she was no longer, she wasn't there. So apparently it was the, the, right at the end of her shift. We have to, we have to really listen to God. We have to listen to God. You know, and God will show us who we really are. He will show us our weak comings. He will show us our strengths. He will show us these things. We have to pay attention. We have to pay attention. Because we don't want that hanging over our head. And we're thinking about like, man, dog, I, I did the wrong thing. You know, this lady said that God told her to do it and I just kept the money. You know, whether or not she did that, I don't know. But I'm just saying that um, we don't want things like that hanging over our head. You know, um. Because that's just something else for the enemy to keep playing over and over and over in our head. You know, you didn't do the right thing. You didn't do the right thing. You know, even though God forgives us. But the enemy, he, he'll replay it over and over and over in our head. Even though we could have repented. But he'll still play it. He'll still play it over and over in our head. That's why it's better to just do the right thing from the beginning. I remember I went to an estate sale. And, um, yeah, I was picking up some purses. It was one particular purse that I didn't care much for. And God told me to give it to my friend. And so... You know, I got the purse. It was a golden looking purse. And I got it. And I was like, hmm, this purse look a little unique. And I like unique things. So, so I got the purse. And I, um, I was like, I'm going to wear this purse. I don't know keep this purse. So I wore it that Sunday. My friend saw me and she said, that's a gorgeous purse. When she said that, oh my goodness. <laughs> I was like, wow, this is her purse. <laughs> and I have it. I was not obedient. So I was going to try to play it off and just tell her that, you know, like, like she likes the purse. I was going to just give it to her. But when I was when I was saying it to her, she was like, I thought the purse, I thought you bought the purse for yourself. I said, I said, no, God told me to get it for you. And so by her asking those questions, I had to tell her the whole story. <laughs> Every time. I saw her with that purse. I had to smile. I had to smile because I was like, <laughs> I remember that story. God doesn't condemn us. God does not condemn us. So me even not following what God told me to do in the first place, it didn't condemn me. It was like, okay now, I told you to give that purse to her, and you was you you wasn't obedient, you know. So it wasn't like um, 
it wasn't like I was just beat down because I didn't give her the purse to begin with. You know, it wasn't like that. It was just the Holy Spirit just letting me know it, you supposed to have given her that purse. So that's how God does us. He doesn't condemn us. He really doesn't. He doesn't condemn us. And after we have repented, and if we do it again, he's going to forgive us again. Because that's the type of God that we serve. And sometimes after we have repented, and even if we don't do it again, the enemy will bring it back up. He will bring it back up because he's an accuser of the brethren. So he will bring it back up. It doesn't mean that we have to accept it because we're free from that. We're free from it. So if God isn't going to remember it, we don't have to remember it. I, I love God so much. I really do. He doesn't judge me. He doesn't judge me. Even, I mean, he doesn't condemn me. Even if I do something wrong, he still doesn't condemn me. That's not what he wants to do with us. He wants to enjoy us. I didn't like punishing my children. I wanted to enjoy them. We would go for rides in the car, you know, just just riding for for hours. Um, talking, reading. I would let them um read. Different ones will would read, you know, a page, and then the other person would read a page, and you know, we would stop at the different stores and look around and go to the beach, and I would I would just enjoy my children. In the woods, walking, um, roasting hot dogs, even though I didn't know what I was doing. They didn't know I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> Only thing they knew was that we were having fun. I didn't have much money. I really didn't have much money at all. But I love my children. I love my children and I wanted to spend that time with them. I wanted to spend that time with them. So one day when we was right on our way to the beach and I saw that it said outlet store. And that's how we started going to the outlet stores. And I was able to start buying them like the kid, you know, because I had the I had the money. I was using my income tax to do it and uh, letting them pick out the clothes that they wanted. You know, I wouldn't buy anything for myself, which I found out later. That wasn't the right answer. It wasn't the right thing to do. Because I should have been buying something for myself. As well as buying something for my children. But we would go and just really have a good time. I enjoyed being with my children so very much. God loves being with us so very much. So very much. That's why he made us in his image. And he made us to have the same authority that Jesus had. And Jesus speaking to those things and seeing those things take place, we can do the same thing. That's what kind of God we serve. That's how much he loves us. So it's not that Jesus could heal it's that the same power dwells in us and we can lay hands on the sick and see them recover. So it's no difference, no difference between us and Jesus. There's no difference. The same power that Jesus has dwells in us. That's the power that raised Jesus from the dead. It dwells in us. And Jesus even said it himself, greater works shall we do because he goes to the father because he goes to the father greater works shall we do 
you know, I'm ready for the greater works. And, you know, and I just keep saying it over and over to myself. Over and over. Because I want God to use me for his glory. I want him to use me for his glory. So even as I speak, I want people to be healed. Even as I smile at them in the stories, on the street. I want them to be healed. I want them to feel God's presence. As they encounter me, I want them to encounter him. I just want God to use me for his glory. You know, I would always say, God, I want everything that you have for me. And I want somebody else's who don't want theirs. Because I'm greedy for the things of you. I would say that to God all the time. I want everything he has for me. Everything that God has for me, I want it. And I even want somebody else's who don't want theirs. Because I'm greedy for the things of God. I am greedy for the things of God. I don't want there to be anything when I die. I don't want there to, I want it to be that I have finished the race, that I have completed everything that God wanted me to do. That's when I want to go home to be with Him. You know, I know I'm slow about doing some things like exercising, it's one thing that the Holy Spirit keeps reminding me of. He keeps reminding me of it. Exercising. And why God wants me to do that, I don't know. I don't know what what it could be. I really don't. But I know that he's calling me to do it. So I know I need to just, just dig in and just do it. Just do it. You know, I mean, don't we don't like um, to be tired or we don't like um, our body aching. But when God tells me to exercise, I know I need to do that. I need to do more of it than what I do. Because that's my worship to Him. That's my worship to Him. That's what He's calling me to do. I do it because of my love for Him. And I know I need to do more of it. Because I really have slacked up. I've slacked up a lot. We make mistakes. We're going to always make mistakes. We live in this world. We live in this body. We are going to make mistakes. We are. But we have a Heavenly Father who forgives us. Who forgives us. Who looks at His Son. His Son blood. And say a covenant. He looks at Jesus' blood and says it covered it. It covered all those sins, those mistakes. It covered it. It covered it. He took care of everything. Jesus paid the price for it all. Everything. God didn't say, oh, I forgot this. No, no, Jesus paid the price for it all, for it all. God didn't forget and leave something out. He didn't, he didn't forget it. He paid the price for everything, for everything, everything. Because his love for us is so great. So, 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 so great. So today I say, let him love you. Let him love you. Sometimes we look at our life and we just think we mess up so much. Can't nobody love us. But that's a lie from the enemy. God can 
And he does love you, even in your mistakes, even in your mess. He can take the worst sin of the ones that we look at and say, hey, there's no way that person could ever turn around. He takes those. He turns them around. He turns them around. Murderers, he has turned around. Because that's the kind of God we serve. You know, we look at certain sins and we think they are worse than others. And God says, no, they're not. No, they're not. And we look at it and we're like, God, how can that sin not be worse than another sin? Especially when it comes to children. It's like, God, how can you forgive that person? How, how do you forgive them? And you want them to go to heaven after what they've done to a child? And see, we don't understand it. Because God's way of thinking is far beyond ours. Far better. And we don't understand. But you know, even in our not understanding, we need to be trusting. Even in our not understanding, we need to be trusting him. We don't have to understand everything he does. Our children didn't understand everything we did. They didn't understand why you didn't want them to go to that party. Why you don't let them go over to their cousin's house or or um, some relative house. They don't understand that. But you know why. You know why. But they don't. And maybe you don't want them to view that person like that. So you never told them. God's ways are much even greater than ours. So he protects us. Just like you protect your children. And he still sees that sin that we think was so great. He sees them all the same, even when we don't understand. It's come to the end of the video. And I always do the salvation prayer because I don't want anyone to go to hell. So if you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart, now is the time. Just repeat after me. Jesus, come into my heart. I'm a sinner. And I ask for your forgiveness. I repent. I want you to be my Lord and my Savior. I know that you came, you died, and you was resurrected. Just because of your love for me. You wanted me to live eternally with you and the Father. Thank you for your love. You endured the cross because of your love for me. Now I can spend eternity with you and the Father. In Jesus' name, amen. So now that you have prayed that prayer, you are saved. You are. You are saved. Don't let nobody tell you that you're not. You are. Because all it takes is a prayer and meaning it from your heart. So tell someone that you are saved. Tell them that you are saved so they can rejoice too. The angels in heaven are rejoicing because of your confession to help Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I pray for you throughout the day, you and your family, as the Holy Spirit leads me. I love you much, and you make it a good day. Bye.